Picture this, during last week's total lunar eclipse, when the moon turned that eerie blood red and the sky went quiet, two astrophotographers in Namibia pointed their cameras at a faint traveller from deep space, and the universe blinked. In Michael Jaeger and Gerald Riemann's raw frames, the interstellar visitor 3i by Atlas didn't just glow, it glowed green, not pale, not subtle, emerald, like a neon sign switched on during the darkest moment of the eclipse. If the colour holds up under follow-up spectra, it means the comet is changing as it warms, releasing hidden chemistry from a core older than our sun. But with 3i by Atlas, nothing is that simple. The green we expect from common comet molecules has been missing in earlier reads. So what exactly are we seeing? Let's rewind a step. 3i a by Atlas isn't a local comet from our OET cloud. It's an interstellar traveller, a third on record after Amuamua and Borisov, slicing through the solar system on a one-way path. Early estimates put its core near 11 kilometers, about 7 miles, across moving it over 130,000 miles per hour when it was first picked up beyond Jupiter's orbit. That speed isn't unusual for an object dropping into the Sun's gravity well, but its story is. This thing likely formed around a distant star and was flung out eons ago. It's older than the Earth, older than the Sun, and for the first time ever, it's crossing our sky. As it moves inward, sunlight digs into the crust, warming buried ices. The comet wakes. Gas and dust flow out to form a coma, the bright envelope, and a tail that points away from the sun. That's Comet 101. The green light when it happens usually comes from dicarbon, C2, a molecule that fluoresces green when sunlight hits it. We saw that in the green comet C2022 E3. We saw flashes of it in 12P Pons Brooks, the Devil Comet, and in other comets this year. So a green 3i by Atlas could be normal. Except, spectrographs looking for that telltale C2 in this interstellar object haven't found it yet. No clear dicarbon lines, so far. That's the puzzle. Either the dicarbon was buried and is only now reaching the surface, or the green is being produced by something else entirely. Maybe cyanogen, CN, a product of cyanide which some teams have detected in the coma. Or maybe we're seeing an unfamiliar cocktail, a chemical fingerprint from a world that never formed, like ours did. For observers on the ground, the eclipse was the perfect moment. When the Earth's shadow dimmed the sky, 3i by Atlas's emerald hue stood out against the blood-red moon like ink on a page. The timing couldn't be better from a science point of view either. The comet is approaching a mass flyby next month and then perihelion, closest pass to the sun, in October. More heat means more activity. More gas, more dust, bigger coma, longer tail, all of which makes it easier to measure. But there's a catch. During the weeks around perihelion, the sun's glare will swallow the comet from Earth's perspective. We'll lose it. It will then reappear a few months later, a little older, a little changed, and a whole lot closer to Earth. Though it's still a safe distance away, roughly 700 times farther than the Moon. While the Namibia images ripple through astro circles, amateurs and pros kept their quiet watch. One of them, a veteran observer on a Chilean hillside with a 40-inch research scope and a cryo-cooled camera riding a high-precision mount, had been logging 3i by Atlas night after night. Nothing strange, until the morning of September 19, 2 a.m. UTC, when his screen froze him in place. Around the comet's emerald streak, nine dim points had appeared, not drifting, not random, moving in lockstep with the main body. He posted the frames, the first replies dismissed cosmic rays on noise. But within two days, the big guns, JWST, Hubble, the Very Large Telescope in Chile and Keck in Hawaii, confirmed the same pattern. Nine companions, faint but real, keeping formation like fireflies orbiting a lantern. Confirmation is one thing, what the spectra said was another. The nine shared the same speed as 3i by Atlas, the same path and the same green-tinted coma, not local debris, not background stars and not objects from our system accidentally lined up. Their spectral fingerprint suggested more than simple ice and dust, reports pointed to a metal-rich signature, nickel cobalt and hints of high-temperature alloys that don't form in normal comet chemistry. Stranger still, thermal profiles implied steady internal power in the companions, far more per mass than the main body. The back of the envelope numbers made astrophysicists shift in their seats. 3i by Atlas itself had looked like it might be pushing around a tidy 10 gigawatts of energy in its activity. A controversial inference, but not wild on cosmic scales. The nine companions, some fits came back near 20 gigawatts each for objects no bigger than city blocks. That ratio doesn't just stretch what we know, it breaks it. 
Super computers at Caltech and MIT tried to make natural models work. They tweaked temperature and pressure, they played with plasma densities, they tried hybrid combustion like reactions in exotic ice. The codes choked or wandered off into nonsense. To hold that much steady power in that small a package, you need containment we can't build in fuels we haven't mined. That doesn't prove intention, it does carve a line around the possible. How could we all miss nine points that suddenly mattered so much? Timing. According to one Harvard team, the nine points blinked into detectability in about a millisecond. That's too fast for our telescopes to catch the exact moment. Sensors integrate over longer frames. You see the before, then the after. Like a magician blocking your view just long enough to complete a move. Space has a habit of moving in millisecond rhythms. Gamma ray bursts dump more energy in an eye blink than all our galaxy stars combined. Cosmic rays cross the Earth-Moon gap in a single second. Black holes merge and ring down in the heartbeat of a hummingbird. The surprise wasn't that we missed the moment, it was what the moment left behind. Not everyone reads that moment the same way. Avi Loeb never shy with a hypothesis, went straight to the mothership model, a larger interstellar craft releasing probes as it nears targets, keeping the main body further out. The companion's denser, hotter cores would fit that profile. So would their matched vectors in identical glow. If your job is to map, sniff or sample worlds up close, you don't bring the bus, you launch the scooters. Others urged caution. A respected dynamicist we'll call Moro floated a natural version, a super-dense interstellar object taking a high-speed hit, fracturing into nine pieces that retained the original speed and path. Impact physics can do wonders, but even Moro's camp had trouble with the power profiles. Rocks don't break into nine perfect reactors, and broken comets don't sprout matching emerald comas overnight. As if the plot needed a new thread, another interstellar visitor muscled into the narrative from the opposite side of the sky, C-2025 R2 Swan. It is by multiple accounts a giant, brighter and likely larger than 3i by Atlas by a wide margin. Images put its tail spanning a ridiculous swath of sky, dwarfing familiar comets and stealing headlines. Swan's perihelion, the same week as 3i by Atlas. Two interstellar visitors converging on the sun together. An interstellar traffic jam. Coincidence is a word scientists use carefully. This timing stretches it. Then someone pulled an old thread out of the archives, a 2200-year cadence in historical observations that could line up with a swan-like visitor's returns. Chinese imperial records speak of a heavenly dragon. Babylonian tablets describe a splitting star. Medieval chronicles around the first century hint at a green banner in the sky. None of that proves anything, but in a world where our telescopes are catching two outsiders in a single season, old stories start to feel less like myths and more like blurry photos taken with words. What are the agencies saying? Not much. NASA and ESA have kept statements tight. Ongoing observations. No evidence of threat. Data under verification. JWST raw spectra have been held while calibration checks run. ESA has declined to comment on planetary defense posture. The White House issued a one-liner. We are aware and monitoring. Silence has a way of amplifying rumor. Inside defense circles, Memos and whispers describe tabletop exercises, contingency plans and a quiet scramble. China's space program, according to some reports, is retuning heavy lift work toward high-velocity interceptors. ESA engineers have dusted off asteroid deflection designs. Private companies with rapid launch capability have been asked what it would take to throw a scout craft on short notice. Loeb, for his part, has asked the United Nations to convene an emergency session on interstellar object policy and has floated the controversial idea of nuclear readiness as a signal not to use but to show capability. If these are probes, he argues, they'll be studying our radio spectrum and they'll know our posture. We shouldn't look asleep. Others push back. Don't escalate a science case into a standoff. The true line between caution and paranoia is always thin. We're running out of time to argue in abstract. October is close. Both interstellar objects will swing behind the sun within days of each other. Before dawn, ordinary people will spot green streaks and post the pictures. Awe and red will sit together on the same porch. This isn't a shaky phone video of lights. It's in the big databases. It's on the schedules of real telescopes. It's been reduced, stagged and peer reviewed. And at the exact moment of most interest, the sun will pull the curtain. When the curtain comes up, what should we look for? Four things will tell the tale. First, trajectory residuals. The little differences between where gravity says an object should be and where it is. Comets get pushes from outgassing. We can model that. A leftover nudge that refuses to fit is a red flag. Second, 
Light curve periodicity. If the brightness beats like a clock and the clock doesn't drift with rotation or viewing angle, simple spin is in the whole story. Third, spectral fingerprints. If high temperature alloy signatures persist across instruments and angles, natural explanations thin out. Fourth, thermal behavior. Natural bodies warm in sunlight and cool in shade. A tidy, stable underground heat signature that doesn't track solar exposure has to be explained. What about the green? If dicarbon lines pop up as activity ramps, 3i ATLS can join the Green Comet Club and we can move on to other oddities. If CN dominates, then cyanide-derived glow could explain the Namibia shots. If neither shows up and the green holds, we're in new chemistry and that might be the most exciting outcome of all. An interstellar object carrying volatiles that never took in our solar system would be a science gift, alien in the best way. And the nine companions? The most boring, most beautiful answer is that they're fragments doing something we've never quite seen up close. The most dramatic answer is that they're probes and the main body is a bus. In either case, the data will do the talking. If the nine keep formation through perihelion, if their power profiles stay ludicrous, if their comae stay matched and their spectra stay hot, then even the skeptics will have to widen their frame. If they drift, dim and fizzle, then we'll file them under space is wild and write better models. Swan R2 complicates everything and clarifies nothing. If it's truly on a 2200 year cadence and if it's 100x more luminous than 3i ATLS, then it will dominate sky time and flood the sensors with its own stories. People will build narratives anyway. Swan as protector, Swan as predator, Swan as a scheduled service called by a civilization that measures in millennia. In the absence of certainty, our brains do what brains do. The cure is in mockery, its measurement. Which brings us to the only part that we control, how we meet this moment. With instruments pointed, checklists ready, and a bias toward boring truth. With curiosity stronger than fear, and caution louder than clickbait, with room for both possibilities to live until the numbers collapse the waveform. Comet and craft, miracle and mundane. When the green light fades back into the sky after the blackout, we'll see which story we're in. Maybe it'll be the simplest. A weird interstellar comet, emerald and loud, carrying a chemistry lesson from a colder nursery and a fragmentation episode that taught us something new about how ISIS crack under stress. Maybe it'll be the harder one. A networked probe released from something older than our species. A quiet audit of a world that finally learned to look up and listen. Maybe it'll be neither. The universe is under no obligation to be tidy. For now, hold this picture in your mind. A blood red moon, a green comet blazing beside it and, just visible if you know how to look, nine faint sparks sliding in the same direction at the same speed like a constellation that learned to move. That was the frame that changed the room. That was the moment the whisper got loud enough to hear. If you're watching this because the sky has always felt personal to you, you're exactly the audience this moment needs. Keep your eye on the upcoming windows. The Mars flyby next month, perihelion in October, the reappearance and the December closest approach. Watch for the spectra. C2, CN, CO, CO2. What's the light curves for a steady heartbeat that makes no sense for a tumble? What's the orbit fits Titan or kink? And when the headlines shout, look for the data underneath. The sky is generous with its mysteries. It pays us back when we're patient. We'll be here through the blackout and beyond, breaking down the first fresh frames, the first fits, the first papers. We'll call hype hype and wonder wonder. We'll celebrate either way, if nature was enough or if something more crossed our path for a reason we don't yet understand. Until then, take one more breath under the night. Two interstellar visitors, one green surprise, nine companions that shouldn't be possible. A calendar counting down to a week when the sun hides the story and then gives it back. This isn't science fiction, it's real astronomy in real time above all of us. The universe has knocked. Whether we open the door or just peek through the window, we don't get to pretend we didn't hear it.